I like him putting a season together like a meal. And that goes from soup to nuts. You can't have all starch dishes, you can't have all soups, because we are a festival. And we have people come and see five plays, some of them, some of them more. They stay for a long time. So uh, I try to get a balance. And this year at the festival we're doing King Lear. And I chose it because I had a conversation with Brian Bedford and I said, you know, it's time for you to do Lear. And uh, he had a vision of it that was tiny. He was, wanted to do it at the John Patterson. And then Antony Cimolino said, no, no, we'll do it at the festival. Because as Brian, in studying the play, realized that th that festival stage is perfect for Lear. It just accommodates it. I chose The Merchant of Venice because I was talking to Graham Greene and to my great surprise, he chose to do Shylock. And so that was also artist-driven. And then there was the, An Ideal Husband, which we were going to do another play. We were going to do Figaro, but it was too expensive, and it was too much like farce, which the Comedy of Errors is. So I chose An Ideal Husband, which had always interested me, Wilde writes very well, he's a genius, and uh, it's very timely, and it's also got a lot of wit and laughter. The most difficult choice for an artistic director of a classical theater is the choice of the musical, which brings in 55% of our revenue. We've done all the big ones, but we hadn't done our Oklahoma, which is the granddaddy, of, of the musicals. Oklahoma is the first book musical, really, and it has its basis in a literary, and it's a great musical, and we hadn't done it. Then at the Avon Theater, we have To Kill a Mockingbird, which is the family experience. We have, oh, The Comedy of Errors, which I'm directing, and um, I'm doing that because we really didn't have any comedy in the season. It's, it's uh, aside from the two musicals, it's all very heavy. I did the Comedy of Errors once before. It's Shakespeare's only farce. It is a farce, and it's based on a play by Plautus, but he doubles the twins. In Plautus' play, there's just one pair of twins, and he does two, because he's better than anyone else. But I... I went to Ephesus, where the play takes place, and I was astounded at how much of the play, which I had already done, was based on facts that were Greek and in Ephesus, and I don't know how he did that. I was agog. The play is, has a lot of allusions to St. Paul's letters to the Ephesians, and I knew this from having directed it, but there I was in Ephesus, in a theater where St. Paul delivered these letters. Well, I was astounded by all of this, and I had, it was an emotional thing. It stirred my imagination. So, the set for the Comedy of Errors is that famous library, the facade of the library in Ephesus. Uh, which works very well for farce because and it has three doors, which was the way they used to do this in the old days. Then we had to get another musical, and I wanted something for Cynthia Dale, and we had a huge hit with Anything Goes, so we did Gershwin's My One and Only, which is actually two musicals put together. The music is great, and the tap dancing will be great and Cynthia's singing of those Gershwin tunes will be great, and I can't wait to see it. I once said to our musical director, Bertold Carrière, we were doing a musical, and I said, oh, Bert, you hire a singer, they can sing. You hire a dancer, they can dance. You hire an actor, potluck, because you can't measure it like you can measure those skills. I have a great deal of respect for the musical performers and for the form. 
and it's very Shakespearean. Um, you know, you have soliloquies in Shakespeare and you have solos. Also in Shakespeare you know exactly if the, the character comes on with white hair and is very, very, very fat, you know it's Falstaff. Just like you know that if there's a lady coming down the stairs in a big hat, you know it's Dolly. So uh, there are many, many similarities in how you present a musical and how you present a Shakespeare. I chose Othello, another tragedy, because I had, I, I had done Othello, but only once in my tenure, which was the first year. And I wanted to do an Othello with a Canadian. And so I did that. And then William Hutt wanted to come back because he made a promise to me that after he retired, I said, Bill, will you please be in my last season for sentimental reasons? Also, the fact that you sell a lot of tickets doesn't hurt. And he said, all right. I said, you'll just play a little part. Well, as things turned out, he chose to be in a delicate balance, which is an enormously long role. It's the, the delicate balance also reunites Bill and Martha Henry, so that was the reason for that choice. Then we have Of Mice and Men. For Graham Greene, I wanted to give him a, another piece, and he wanted to do two pieces. He wanted to come for the whole season. It's emerging that a lot of these plays were driven by, for artists, really. Shakespeare wrote these plays for specific actors. And so I choose the Shakespeare, certainly, for specific actors. You can't do Lear without a Lear, or Othello without an Othello, or A Merchant of Venice without a Shylock. At the studio theater, we were going to present a one-man version of Macbeth, but there were a lot of problems with this, and so we, I, we had to substitute it with something, and so we revived the blonde, the brunette, the vengeful redhead, because it was such a huge hit last year and shows Lucy Peacock off to great effect, a tour de force, and people were lined up every day to see it. And it's already selling out, so people should get their tickets and not be disappointed. There's a one-woman show called Shakespeare's Will, written by a Canadian who's having uh, great success all over right now. And Shauna McKenna brought me that play and it fits in We are Shakespearean festival. Um, and the play's very good, and she'll be wonderful in it. Then there's the Odyssey, which I've wanted to do since the beginning. It's a fascinating piece. It tells the story of the Odyssey, Homer's journey, uh, but through Caribbean rhythm. There's Pentecost, which I've also wanted to do for 15 years. And if I had to choose what I'm proudest of in this season that goes from soup to nuts, it would be the inclusion of Pentecost, because I think it's a very important play. It is a play of size, so it fits in. And I think it's going to be a real punch in the stomach. There's something for everyone. And I won't have to prepare a playbill ever again. I shall go and eat fast foods instead of banquets.